going to welcome the pastor, Regina Tucker. services last Sunday, on Sunday morning and that Sunday afternoon, all the apostles in New York. so you can be in a position to help those who cannot help themselves, right? So we have to understand the healthy order. Uh, Jesus said to deny ourselves, but he didn't say to neglect ourselves. So we got to know there's a difference, right? Amen. So I pray for Elder Paulus because he is just a jewel. He's, a, he's so precious. He will literally give you the shirt. I believe he will. Did you give somebody a shirt off this? <laughs> but I know he killed it. I know he would, if he had two, he'd give one away. <laughs> a lot of people wouldn't even do that. Right? But anyway, we pray for him and pray for help for him. He picks up the food two or three times a week. He, and some, now the, some, uh, the company that we get costs warehouse to give us furniture sometimes. You never know when that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And thank God for uh, Brother Jeremiah's been helping him out. Amen. And Brother Mike. And, 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 and God is feeling that. Yes. Amen. Yes. But I, you know, this one, brother, I just worry about it sometimes. So. Amen. 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 Praise God. Just some things on my heart that I'm just going to share. I don't know how long I'm going to be on this keyboard. But everybody said, Holy Spirit, Holy have your way. That's so all. We, we just want to be effective, right? Amen. We're not here for we're not up here for a show. We want the Lord Jesus to be magnified. Amen. 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 Thank you. Something I wrote down when I was in meditation. I said, I don't want God to fire me and let me keep working. And I said, Lord, I'm mercy. Now, my, when I talk, it's usually meat. It's, it's for those who pretty much, but the Holy Spirit can work. I, I, he can work on anybody, but I'm talking from a place of dedication. 
God wants us to be stay dedicated to him in this world that's going crazy. I'm talking about the church world is just losing their mind. Not, not, not the body of Christ. The church world is just losing their mind. And if we don't understand the voice of the Lord Jesus, you get caught up in the waves and the winds. How many know the scripture says there's going to be a great falling away? Right? I don't want to be in that falling away. And some people, and I'll say it again the last time, some people don't care about being a vessel of honor. They just want to be used. They don't care if it's honorable, if they're living an honorable lifestyle. They just want God to do. How many souls have we got? If you had a you got a problem with the way that we do things, how many souls did you win this last Sunday? How many souls came to Christ at your church? If 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 you didn't get at least 150 people saved, you shut up. That's what they literally said. Don't you can't tell me nothing. But Jesus, the Father, would draw by his spirit. Are we doing the drawing? Come on, come on. It's the spirit of God that's doing the drawing for his glory and for his kingdom. That's right. I heard a big church on um, New Year's Eve night. They had an altar call, but it was an interesting altar call. They said, well, how many people need a pastor? How many people know you don't have a church and you need a pastor come down here? And then that's the way they took the altar call. And he said 150 people got saved. Well, it seemed like more 150 people joined your church. Yeah. But did they really come to Christ? So, you know what I'm saying? So we're defending ourselves in a lot of stuff. People, people in pastoral positions shouldn't be in those positions. People think just because they can draw a crowd, they need to they need to start a church. It doesn't make you a pastor just because you can start, just because you can draw a crowd. That's how a lot of a lot of Christians get in trouble. One one, one man of God was very evangelistic and he was good at drawing crowds and entertaining. And he was a good he was a good preacher. But my mother watched him. He was just literally destroying himself because he wanted a church. He said he wanted people to support him with his tithe, with their tithes. You know. So mama, mom had a talk. Actually, drove her to his church and and, he, and she talked to him and she was really concerned about him because his health was going down. You know, he he honored her, but he ended up dying prematurely. In the church that he built, he literally built that church with his own hands. It was taken away from, you know, family. Had a, had a family ministers. None of them got the church. It just went somewhere else. So it's just like it was all in vain. Because God didn't tell him. To, God most likely did not tell him to start a church. Sometimes God gives us to go and help other ministries. Sometimes pastors and ministries of, are suffering because people are not obeying God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We get too selfish and we wonder, what is, what's in it for me? What's in it for you is to hear him say, well done. Amen. Thou right. good and faithful servant. It's obeying God. If God told you to do it, if you say God told you to do it, who am I to argue with you? I'm not going to argue. If you're going to say, well, I'm doing it because I need tithes and offerings. There's one evangelist said, yeah, I, he was a young evangelist. He went and got started church. Yeah, I'm going to get all my children to church. Because everybody needs to be supported with tithes and offerings. I'm like, what? Go get a job. That's my, that's my trademark. Go get a job. <laughs> Go get a job. <laughs> So my mother used to say this, and I think it must have been something that she 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 um, heard when she was coming up in the church of God in Christ, maybe because it's a, it, it's a saying that's pretty prevalent in that circle. God is the only boss that will fire you and let you keep working. 
And that's because he loves souls. Paul said, I bear my body and bring it under subjection. That lest while I teach others, I be a castaway. I can't justify my sin and my undiscipline in my lifestyle just because somebody got blessed through me. That's not to justify your mess. That's to encourage you. It shouldn't, if, you, if your heart is right, it should encourage you to get better. Not to get worse in your stuff. You know, I told y'all a story about this one preacher who was with my mother years ago, and she, he was going around from house to house having Bible studies and so-called word of knowledge and stuff, and, and lifestyle was messy, and, and my mother went to him, and I was with her with this situation, and, and she told him, she said, I heard, you know, I've been hearing about your, uh, some things about your lifestyle, and she said, I think you need to probably sit down and get, get yourself together. Amen. He said, well, mother, people need my gift. And she said, well, right now your gift is like a, a riverbank with trash floating around it, trash floating around the edges. And then he says, well, mother, people could just overlook the trash and receive the gift. But that just showed you he didn't care. He just wanted to be used. He just wanted people to, I don't know, it's just weird to me. I, I don't think like that. I'm not wired like that. I thank God I wasn't raised like that. I went in a home of hypocrites. My mother was the same in church, at home, same. My dad was genuine. So, he, you know, I just don't think like that. And that's weird to me. It's weird that people don't care as long as God is using you. Don't let that fool you. And not getting your life right with him. Because you can actually help some other people get right and you lose your soul. Now, that's the truth. Amen. So I wrote this down. It says, sometimes it's absolutely necessary to revisit the place where we first fell in love with Jesus. Sometimes you just got to go back in your mind and heart. Your love, just, just for the things of God. Absolutely necessary. And if you remember your first love, your first your compassion, your passion, just to know him. Wanting, yes, wanting to be used by him, but wanting to be close to him. Thank you, Lord. This song has been on my mind. I've never sang this song, but this song has been on my mind, and I never get the words out. Thou my end, will I see for sure more than faith or life? To me, all alone, this pilgrim journey, Savior land, we walk with thee, close to thee. This pilgrim journey, Savior, love me one with thee, close to me, close to me. Oh. 
Close to thee. see you, Lord. We want to see you in peace because we are all going to stand before you to be judged for our deeds in this body, for the good and the bad. Thank you, Lord. Just help us to keep our heart postures tender right up right before you us to take a stand for righteousness, <coughs> not to waste energy making excuses for, oh my God, lukewarmness, and just messiness, and we fight to be messy. about standards anymore. That's your truth. That's my truth. If we believe the word is still the word of God, 
Jesus is the truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is making a separation. He is the one that separates the sheep from the goat. He is the one that determines the good vessels, the uh, vessels of honor and of dishonor. He is the one that's going to do the separating. He said, let the wheat and the tear grow together. He said also in 1 Timothy, I believe, uh, he said, I know those. The Lord knows those who are his. And he said, let everyone who named the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. And his truth stands firm. His foundation is sure. <laughs> Uh, I, want, I just wanted to bring to the house that God is working and this is, a, this is the first Sunday of 2024 yes. yeah. praise God <clears throat> we had a good family gathering over of, of the New Year's weekend and uh, one of our nieces Elder Rodney's sister she wasn't ashamed to tell her age. She's turned 50. And she is such a blessing to the family. When my sister and I, we had our birthdays. And anyway, she's always been real since attentive to people's birthdays and just wanting to celebrate the special momentum, you know, times that those monumental times. <coughs> so she turned 50 and, and, and um, um, El Rodney and his niece and all that got together, his to her daughters, and we and got the hope to the family and the other cousins, first cousins and us, and and they wanted to bless her with a special offering and so and a party. So we had a party for her. Oh, I mean, just a little gathering for her. But everybody mostly got sick <laughs> afterwards. Well, I want to say something. I don't know if I should say. I ain't gonna be so specific, but somebody brought all that to us and got us all sick. We think. <laughs> so, anyway, I don't, I was really had a hard week, and um, but I didn't feel like I needed to. I felt like I still need to press. So, amen, I am here, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank, you, amen. Amen. Thank you for your love and prayers. Amen. 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 But how many of you got some things in your life that you, you know, God, you just need God to straighten some things out? Amen. Just saying. And some stuff been going on for a long time. Amen. Right? Yeah. And sometimes this stuff goes on because... It takes us a while to turn it over to Jesus. <laughs> so I said, turn it over to Jesus. Sometimes it takes a while to turn it over to him because we're trying to figure out. We're just trying to work it out. And that's the thing. God understands our human frailty. He, he understands where we are. 
<clears throat> and he, he gives us time. He gives us time to find his grace. If we don't quit. Because the enemy wants us to just give up. That's his plot. And I was just telling Sister Sean, New Year's Eve night, she was here and said, keep showing up, because when you show up, God's going to show out yeah. for you. And when coming is the, is the big part yeah. of our part. Yeah. And we can even come in the door. I mean, we can come and fall out of the office and say, God, I'm here. <laughs> you know? That's a big part of just coming. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He wants to bless. He will bless your efforts. Yes. Amen. Yes. So, what was as a matter of fact, the song I wanted to play before I did this, <laughs> and it is. <clears throat> so it's a song because I'll, I'll make the darkness. I think I'm gonna play that because <clears throat> this will lead up to where I'm trying to say. I will make the darkness light before you. What's wrong, I'll make it right before you. This is a prophetic word. All your battles I will fight. I will just get on the keyboard and prophesy to myself. Amen. So that's, I wanted to bring that to the house. I have something here that would bless me and I came across it and I would make copies. I'm not going to pass them out. I want anybody that wants one, you can, you can have one. Um, I'm just going to sit them here. So I don't want to, you know, if you want one, I don't want to make everybody. You know what I mean? Everybody ain't having a hard time. Everybody ain't Amen. Amen. So, just to correspond with that song and all, um, Isaiah 45 2. Isaiah 45, 2, there, amen? I will go before you 
and make the crooked places straight. I would break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. But how many know the anointing does this? Yes. Amen. Right? Amen. The anointing does this. And God wants us, our minds to be elevated. Amen. To believe him for better. But like I was saying earlier, sometimes we can't receive it until we find that grace Amen. to enter in. I think about Abraham and Sarah. When, when God told Abram, when he visited him in a dream and told him he was going to give him a son from his own loins. And I'm not going to go any other. That's probably all the scripture I'm going to do. I'm going to do a little talking. And we're going to move on. Abraham, when he was Abram, God visited him in a dream and told him he was going to have a son from his loins, from his own loins. And he was like, well, how can this be? You know, I only have this, my servant or something like that. And he, and he said it's going to be, a, he said it was going to be a son from his loins. But in, I, that's in Genesis 15. But, but God did not say, God did not say at that time, even in the dream, that it was going to be through Sarah. Or Sariah. Sar Sariah was barren and young. I mean, they both were young. Sariah was young and barren, but he didn't tell Ab Abram that it was going to be through Sariah, and he didn't make that clear until Sariah, or Sarah at this time, was 90, 90? Come on now, everybody knows. 90 years old. And um, Abraham was a was hundred. But if you look at that story, they, it was not made clear that it was going to come that the child was going to come through Sarah until a year before it happened. Right. Right. Amen. Right. Me, and, me and my sister Diana, we studied this years ago, and it was a pretty awesome study. So if you read that, if you read Genesis 15 chapter, just read. Just follow the guideline. And then, and then Paul talks about it in Romans. And so, so he didn't make it clear it was going to come through Sarah. And then Sarah heard it was going to come through her. She laughed. And then the angel said, why do you laugh? You know? and, then, and she was like, well, I don't have pleasure in my old age. And so the thing about it is Ishmael was born. Through the handmaiden had Hagai. Hagai, Hagai, Hagai. Right? Yeah. And God blessed. How many know that God blessed Ishmael? Yeah. God blessed him. So if God blessed Ishmael, why do we talk about him like he's cursed? Why do we talk about that whole situation like they messed up and they should have did that and they disobeyed God. But if you read the scriptures, they didn't disobey God. They just was living life. Right? They weren't supposed to have Ishmael. Well, what, how much stuff we done done and we say, this is the thing. We're human. God leaves space for us to be human. Even in the midst of his word, his promise. Because we don't know everything. He don't tell us everything. He don't tell us everything all at once. He gives us, he gives us enough to be... Thank you, Diane. Warm water. Thank you. He don't tell us everything. He'll give us a word. And then he'll let us search it out. And then we start trying to figure it out. Because <laughs> stuff started taking too long. You know? Well, like Sarah did. Well, hey, it's 20 something years. I don't know, it was 25 years or something. And she's like, I don't know what it was before. She's, um, I didn't get up for a plan on talking about this, but 
before she before she suggested to Abraham to go to Sarah uh, to Hagar. It was a while that passed. And she was like, well, maybe this is what, you know. And, and you got to understand, too, that was a custom at that time. That wasn't like an out of the ordinary thing. That that's, that was not an out, of order, an out of order ordinary thing for them to have. If the, if the, if the wife is barren and for the handmaiden to have a child for the, for the husband or whatever. I mean, that wasn't like so out of order out of the ordinary for them and their culture. Right. So, but, so it just looked like that's, yeah, yeah, you know what, that's probably what he, that's. So, the thing is, they had Ishmael, then here comes Isaac, the promised child. And the conflict, the conflict was already there with Sarah and Hagar before Isaac came. But then when Isaac was born, then there was conflict between Isaac and when Ishmael was mocking Isaac. And then Sarah said she got to go. And she already had put her out before. But, well, I think she ran off. I think Hagar ran off and then God told her to go back and submit. And this time, she says she got to go. And then God told Abraham, listen to, listen to your wife. Yeah. So men, <laughs> men who say they don't, you know. <laughs> men, they, they don't, you know, no, this is the thing. It's important for women to let men lead. But sometimes men need to pray about listening to their wives. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 That's all I got to say. <laughs> Amen. 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 So sometimes we do some things between the promise and the manifestation of the promise. And sometimes we feel like we messed up. We messed up everything. We, you know, oh man, I shouldn't have done that, shouldn't have. And we think we forfeit what God said that he's going to do. But I want you to be encouraged this day that you haven't forfeit what God told you that he's going to do. Amen? Amen? And all the mistakes, all the mistakes in between is humanity, and we need to acknowledge them. Everybody say acknowledge. acknowledge. We need to acknowledge when we messed up, when we feel like we messed up and all that. Acknowledge it, yeah. you know. But that's how you, you gotta be real with how young people want you to be a, a numb, and, and I was like, I can't do that. I can't, like my niece, I told my sister last night, I said, I'm, I mean, I'm feeling better now. But I was just feeling, just not, I said, I'm not feeling good. <laughs> And it's hard to confess that because sometimes if you're around a word of faith, they don't like you to confess. <laughs> so, but we were talking about, and she brought up one of our nieces, she was trying to work, you know, she was about in her early, probably teenage, 18, 19 years old. She wasn't feeling good. And she was in the mirror confessing, I'm the healed of the Lord. And she was confessing all these good things. She said, I'm the healed of the Lord. And she said, I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know, but the Bible says in James that if there are any sick amongst you, call for the elders and they tell you don't confess you're sick. I mean, you know, you can confess you're sick but believe for your healing. Amen. Now, Abraham believed against all hope he believed. Sarah's womb was, was hopeless. But he still believed God. Amen. Ain't that something? He didn't ignore the barrenness of Sarah's womb. Amen. In Romans, Amen. talks about that. Amen. But, she, he, but he believed that God was able to quicken her dead womb. And he did. Amen. So yeah, it's okay to acknowledge where we are. And then believe God to bring us out. 
So I just want to encourage you all the crooked places God is going to make straight. Hallelujah. The dry places he's going to cause the rivers to flow. I'm going to read this. I meant to... I'm sorry I didn't read this. I meant to read this. This says, before you start your day, pray this over yourself and believe it. There is an anointing of ease on my life. God is going before me making crooked places straight. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. I will not continually struggle. What, what used to be difficult will not be difficult anymore. God's favor and blessings on my life is lightening the load and taking the pressure off. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That's my encouragement for now. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercies. That you encourage us, Lord, even sometimes it seems so hopeless. And just sometimes it just, you don't, can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, but your mercies. Your goodness and mercies, Lord, shows up in such unique, supernatural ways in our lives. Lord, you created us for your good pleasure. You love us. You made us. That's why you love us. You created us. You redeemed us back by the blood of Jesus because you wanted us back. You didn't want, you were not willing to let the devil just have total claim on your creation. I understand that you love us. I don't know how much you love me, but I know why you love me. Because I'm yours. Thank you, Lord. We, are, we belong to you. We bow by your blood, Jesus. Father, I just pray for each and every one here. Thank you, Lord, for each one that pressed their way out to the house of God today. Father, just pray that your Holy Spirit would just minister to each and every heart, to everyone, right where they are, right in the core of their need. Jesus, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost conviction of righteousness, sin, justice. Thank you, Lord, that you draw by your Spirit, Lord. Father, you said none can come to the Lord Jesus except you draw. That you draw. And none can come to the Father except by the Son. We thank you, Lord. You draw men unto yourself. Hallelujah. Open eyes. Thank you, Lord. Open eyes. Thank you, Jesus, that you may be seen, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Come on, pray with me a little bit. Thank you, Holy One. Glory unto your name, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your presence. Thank you for your holy presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Mm. Thank you for making a crooked place as straight for us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for causing rivers to flow in the dry places. Thank you, Holy One. Thank you for your anointing, Lord, that removes the burdens of the yokes of bondage, to destroy the yokes of bondage, Lord. 
only by your spirit. We lift up each and every one here. We lift up our families. We lift up the body of Christ, Lord. We lift up this nation. We lift up, Lord Jesus, country, Lord Jesus. We pray for leadership, God. We plead your blood over leadership over this nation. Lord Jesus, turn the hearts. Turn hearts to make decisions to favor the righteous causes of your people for the sake of the righteous ones, Lord. That as much as possible, we may live a quiet, peaceable life here on this earth, Lord. In the name of Jesus. We cover the body of Christ in the blood of Jesus, and we pray for the churches of the living God. And those who are truly leaders, who are true apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, Thank you that you are doing a shaking. You're the one that's going to shake this thing up. You're going to make the difference. It's going to be seen. We're going to know who really loves Jesus after a while. That's the song. You're the one that's going to do the separating and exposing. No man. Some of these people trying so hard to expose, they better be careful, they're going to be exposed. But he said he's the one that does the separating. And we need to pray. Pray that he does it. Pray his will be done. God's will be done. And that's what we do in this house. We pray the God, that the kingdom of God that his will will be done on this earth as it is already in heaven. Thank you, Father, that it's not your will that any perish, but that all come into the knowledge of the truth. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So our job and our posture is to, be, to pray. As he said, if my people who are, who, who, who are called by my name, you said if we humble ourselves and pray and turn from our wicked ways that if we seek your face you said you would forgive our sins and you would hear from heaven you would heal our land thank you lord help us not to sin against you by not praying for the people lord god in the name of jesus thank you lord thank you father we thank you father we thank you hallelujah in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory unto your name. Thank you, Lord. The altar is open. I'm going to ask um, Dad Brian, if you would, and, and Elder Apollos, if, if you would come. I don't want anyone, we don't want anyone to leave here like you came if you were down in your spirit, if you need encouragement. That's one of the other reasons you come, amen? amen? To get what we need. The presence of the Lord, we thank God. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. If this is an anointed time. If this is an anointed time for needs to be met. And I, I, I graciously say this, don't wait till after church to come up and ask for prayer. This is the anointed time. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord. If you need salvation, if you haven't accepted the Lord Jesus, just come up in the name of the Lord. If you need healing, direction, need hands laid on, deliverance, his presence is here, the elders are here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
as you do this, you do it in the remembrance of me. And think while we're doing that, we can, I mean, he didn't have to do that. We can remember he didn't have to do that. Amen. 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 But he did. He did. Thank we you. used to sing a song. He didn't have, have to, to do, do it, it, but he did. did. Amen. He didn't have to do it, but he did. He woke me up this morning. He started me on my way. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Yes, thank you. I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> thank you. Do something else. Praise the Lord. Ella, Paul, if we come. We're going to stand, everyone, everyone stand in the audience today. Grab somebody by the hand. We do this and we pray. Amen. Repeat after me. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. Praise God, praise God. Come from my left to your right and take the the elements that hold them until we all take them together.
same man he took the cup. And for the same man he took the cup. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye also as you drink it, remember of me. It also represents Jesus' blood. And he took his blood to cleanse our filthy soul. He took his blood and washed us white as snow. So drink it and remember as often as you do it, remember of him. Drink it in Jesus' name. Thank you. And the Bible said they went away in him. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. Was the blood for me? One day when I was lost, he died on that cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Father, oh, bless the food in the back that the cook prepared, and that the cook that prepared it in Jesus' name. Consider yourself dismissed. I believe the service tonight. Bella Thomas in service tonight. And consider yourself if you have anything. Consider yourself. His blood came freeman down. Freeman down. His blood came freeman down.